greetings to you and welcome to this time of evening prayer. My name is Pam Smith and I'm the pastor at Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lakeland, Florida. And we're delighted that you are with us during this time. It's a good time, this time of day, to set aside the activities of the day, the to-do lists of the day, the worries of the day, and come together um, over the airwaves in ways that I don't fully understand to share this time of worship and prayer together. And so it is then that we begin. Small as a mustard seed and lofty as a cedar, the kingdom of God is growing. While we sleep and rise night and day, the kingdom of God is growing. The low are brought high and the high are brought low. The kingdom of God is growing. Its large branches are home to all kinds of people. My friends, God will not count our trespasses against us, longing instead for us to be reconciled. We come before God then in honesty, humility, and hope. Gracious God, we so often miss your kingdom at work among us. Captivated by power and prestige, we overlook the mustard seeds you have planted all around. <clears throat> Forgive us for failing to notice where and how you are at work. Forgive us when we work against your plans and purposes, fostering divisions when you have called us to a ministry of reconciliation. Beset by apathy when the world has such deep needs. Building walls to keep people out when your branches offer generous nests. Help us to grow in faithfulness, we pray, so that we might reach our fullest height of faith. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. My friends, the scriptures tell us, <clears throat> if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything new has come. We are ambassadors for Christ, for God has reconciled us through him. O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Let us pray. O God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Grant us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first psalm is from Psalm 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, <clears throat> to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre, for you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Psalm 1. Blessed are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do they prosper. 
the wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. A reading from the 17th chapter of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make, the, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, the fourth chapter. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our readings tonight are full of images of trees and greenery and such. And it is fitting, isn't it, that we're hearing these in June when summer is breaking forth around the country and around the Northern Hemisphere. There are many references to trees in the scripture. I'd like you to try to think of some of those. There are the trees that were created by the word of God at creation. There are the trees that were in the garden, the garden that were, was inhabited by Adam and by Eve. There was the tree of which they were not to eat, but they did. The Psalms, too, are full of references to trees, and we heard that in Psalm 1, the second one that we read tonight. In the Gospels, <clears throat> Jesus uses parables to tell and to teach about the kingdom, and natural objects are often used, and we hear this story about the mustard seed, uh, the seed that was scattered. And it grows. And of course, there is reference to Jesus being hanged on the tree at the time of his crucifixion. Trees, luscious, green. Trees that grow, and we don't make them grow. They grow because they're trees. The parable today in Mark, Jesus said, Planted, he scattered the seed on the ground, and he went about his daily work. He went to bed at night, and he got up in the morning and did day-in, day-out things. And the seed would sprout and grow, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. One of the things that I appreciate about these texts is that it provides a counterbalance for me to the ever-lengthening to-do list, the ever-lengthening <clears throat> list of worries and concerns that many of us carry around with us day in and day out. Instead, Jesus said, the kingdom of God isn't like that harsh taskmaster list. The kingdom of God will happen, and God will see to it 
In the reading in Ezekiel, a couple of places, the scripture says, I myself will do it. I am the Lord, I will do it. And it's a caution to us to not take on what is not ours to do. It is a caution to sit back and let God be God, let God do the things that God does. Over these many months, um, this year and a half year of pandemic, many have said, this is a perfect time for me to clean out that closet, to go through all of these papers, to straighten these files, to learn how to make sourdough bread, to make new starts every day, and to have a list of accomplishments because time is so different. And for those for whom that was meaningful, good. That was not my experience. Instead, I felt called to hunker down, to maybe pull a blanket around me, maybe to pull Cat to my lap so that I can hear and feel her purring. A chance just to let God do what God is going to do. And that's how it is in our saving relationship with God. It's what God does. There isn't one thing that we can do to make God love us more. And there's not one thing that we can do to make God love us less. So I invite you to gather in your mind's eye these images of the tree and of the vine, of the mustard seed, of the shrub, and its, its um, production, the leaves that are so abundantly present. And we hear later in the second parable that goes with our reading for Sunday that all the birds will nest in its branches. There is a nest for each of us. There is a place for each of us in the wonderful tree that God grows. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. <clears throat> Together, the Song of Mary, the Magnificat, from the message translation, the message paraphrase. My soul is ecstatic, overflowing with praises to God. My spirit bursts with joy over my life-giving God, for he set his tender gaze upon me, his lowly servant God. And from here on, everyone will know that I have been favored and blessed. The Mighty One has worked a mighty miracle for me. Holy is his name. Mercy kisses all who fear him from one generation to the next. Mighty power flows from him to scatter all those who walk in pride. Powerful princes he tears from their thrones and he lifts up the lowly to take their place. Those who hunger for him will always be filled but the smug and self-satisfied, he will send away empty. Because he can never forget to show mercy, he has helped his chosen servant Israel, keeping his promises to Abraham and to his descendants forever. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of the creation, for rain to water the parched earth, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> for public servants, the government, and those who protect us. For those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection.
protection in this and every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, for those who are in captivity, and those who we name now aloud or in the quietness of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the church, for all gathered together at this time, for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, defend us, gracious Lord. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you, through Christ our Lord, to you, O Lord. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together we pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, my friends, as we depart this time and we go forth, back into our daily lives. I pray with us. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go beside you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, and within you to give you peace. And may the blessing of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you now and forever.